In this episode, let us explore as to how to print the maximum occurring character in the given string. In fact, this program happens to be one of the most frequently asked programming interview question and let's see what the logic is and how to code it. Let me consider my input string as God bless Spider-Man. If you would notice the input string carefully, you would realize that there are many characters which are occurring only once. In fact, a few of the characters are occurring twice, but the character S has occurred thrice. That is the maximum occurring character present in that input string. And that is what is the program supposed to do. It has to print the character which occurs the maximum number of times in the input string. Anyway, how to do it? Well, this is where the map data structure helps us. And how does the map data structure help us in this case? Let me explain. Even before I tell you how the map data structure helps us, let us first decide which map data structure to use. And you know there are three types of map data structures the hash map the linked hash map and the tree map so which of these three should i be using let me explain that this happens to be my input data and when i'll place that data in the hash map this is how it looks and when i'll place it in the linked hash map this is how it looks and when i'll place it in the tree map this is how it looks anyway as all of you know and i've also specified it in my previous episode that the hash map stores the data based on a hash function. For us, it may appear to be a random order. Whereas the linked hash map stores the data in the same sequence as what it appears in the input string and the tree map stores it in the alphabetically sorted order with respect to the key. Anyway, which of these three maps should I be using? Let me tell you. If you will notice the hash map carefully, what it is suggesting is that the key S has occurred thrice and that happens to be the maximum occurring character out of all the data that is there inside the map. In fact, even the linked hash map is suggesting the same, even the tree map is also suggesting the same. So what it goes to show is that you as a programmer to solve this problem have the liberty to make use of any of the three maps. And if you'll ask me which map I would be making use of, well, I would be proceeding ahead by making use of the linked hash map. And what is the logic to obtain the result? Let me explain. My logic for this program begins by creating two variables. One called the max key and the other one called the max val. In fact, I would initialize my max key to blank character and max val to zero. This is how I do it as a Java code and this is how I do it in the animation. What is the use of these two variables and using this, how do I get my solution? Let me explain. Well, if I have to get the solution, what I really have to do is to first get this value and how to get the value? Well, I can get the value by specifying data.getVal. And what I really have to do is to check if that value happens to be greater than my max value. Just in case the value that I have in the map is greater than the max val, then obviously I will have to place that value inside max val and not just that, the corresponding key. I would be placing it inside max key like this. This if condition, in case I apply on all the data present in the map, then it would ensure that by the end, the max val would contain the maximum value and the max key would contain the key which has occurred maximum number of times. But as of now, this one if condition would certainly not be able to travel along the entire length of the map and hence, I will have to enclose this within a loop and I wouldn't be making use of the traditional loops such as the for or the while or the do while rather what I would be making use of is the for each loop like this. This loop will help me to travel along the entire length of the map and each time check if the value present in the map is greater than my max value. 
Just in case I find a greater value, I will update my Maxwell and the Max key. That is what this loop really helps me to do. And if in case you have a larger doubt as to how the for each loop works, then all that I can suggest you is to get back to my episode 18, understand everything about the for each loop and then come back to watch this episode. And for those who have watched the episode 18, let's proceed and apply this logic on the map and see how really it works. For the first time, when I would obtain the value present in the map by specifying data dot get value, this is what I get. And when I'll check if in case it is greater than Maxwell, yes, indeed, the value present in the map is greater than the value present in my variable called Maxwell. After all, one is greater than zero. So I would enter my if condition. And when I'll enter the if condition, you know what happens. I would be updating both my Maxwell as well as the max key. So my new Maxwell is going to be one, whereas the new max key is going to be G. After which, since my if condition is present in the loop, the loop progresses. What happens next? Let me tell you. For the next time, when I again say data dot get value and get the value, this is what I get. And when I'll check if it's greater than my max val, no, you know that one is not greater than one and hence I would not be entering the if. Rather, since I'm in the loop, I iterate to my next data. And again, when I would say data dot get value, this is what I get. And this time, two is greater than one. So I would be entering the if condition and in the if condition, you know, I would be updating both the max val as well as the max key. So the updated value of my max val would be two and the updated value of the max key is going to be D. After which I proceed ahead with my iteration and the next time my value happens to be two. And you know that two is not greater than two. So I don't enter the if condition. Rather, I proceed ahead the next time I get my value in the map as one, one is not greater than two. So I proceed again. I get my next value as one, one is not greater than two. So I proceed again. I would get for the next time my value in the map as two and two is not greater than two. So I again proceed and the next time I get my value as three. Then I'll encounter three. What happens? Let me tell you. Now that the value present in the map is three, it is greater than what is present in Maxwell. So the if condition is satisfied. Hence, I will enter the if condition and you know in the if condition as normal, I would be updating both my Maxwell as well as the max key. So my Maxwell gets the updated value as three and the max key gets the updated key as S. After which, again, I would proceed ahead with the iteration. And as you can see, there is no other value which is present inside the map, which would be greater than three. And hence, by the time I reach the end of the map data structure, I can notice that the max key happens to be yes, and the max val happens to be three. In fact, that is what is the result that I wanted. So all that I have to do is after coming out of the loop, I will have to print the max key as well as the max val like this. And how does the complete program look like? Let me explain. I would begin by creating a new string object with the data as a God bless Python. Next, I would use the two care array method and extract the data from the object and place it inside an array Y. I would also compute the size. After which, I will have to create the map data structure. And as I have told you, I would be making use of the linked hash map. And this is the statement which creates the linked hash map. Well, when you will create the linked hash map, it would be empty. It is your responsibility to place the data, God bless Spider-Man, into the empty linked hash map. And if you'll ask me who does that, this piece of code does it. Well, this is what I have in detail explained in the episode 17. Anyway, next, I will have to make use of today's logic. This is the one. Well, you know, this for each loop ensures that it prints the maximum occurring character present in the input string. And anyway, this is the complete program. And when I'll execute, this is the output. So I'm sure as a programmer, you've been able to understand as to how 
we can print the maximum occurring character present in the input string. Anyway, moving forward, I will discuss more string programs which make use of the map data structure internally and all that you have to do is to keep continuing to watch this video series and keep gaining knowledge.